Redditors who have found dead bodies, what's the story? My wife and I arrived early at an accident that had happened only moments before on the highway. Two other guys and I jumped from our cars to try and help a very old man who was seemingly trapped in his car. I remember thinking he must still be alive because his eyelids flickered rapidly, but also realized that there was not blood flowing from his open wounds. When the medics arrived they just quickly glanced at him and assured me that he was definitely dead already and I would not need to bother anymore. The only things haunting me afterwards were the smell of burning coolant oozing from the car and his crystal blue eyes. As I found out later, he was a local farmer who came from his field, drove onto the highway from there and just turned into oncoming traffic. Also, as we left, we passed two to three other cars with injured people who I could have actually have helped if we had not stopped at the very first wreck we saw. This is about 25 years ago. Didn't think about it for a decade. You stopped to help as soon as you could, no one can blame you for that. I would have done the same thing. I was 13 year with dad in the car leaving home to a safer place during war, we saw about more than 9 people, including kids, dead covered with blood on the street, my dad stopped the car and told to not look, I wish I listened to him, and he put a something to cover them, most likely it was a massacre. Jesus. I hope you and your family are in a safe place now. I'm sorry that you had that experience. May I ask what country this was in? Witnessed a bad car accident Christmas morning about 20 years ago. A van carrying a family crashed on 95 in Florida and apparently nobody was wearing seat belts. Their bodies were all over the road, about 5 or 6 people. That's horrible. I'm a huge stickler about people wearing seat belts when I'm driving. They don't like it but I don't care and this is why. I was an apartment manager for 20 plus years. Received a call from a neighbor apartment that the girl next door was screaming my mom is dead. I ran up to the apartment with my maintenance techs and didn't even see all the blood on the walls and carpet. Got to the back bedroom and found my resident, a 43 year old nurse, dead with her throat slit and had been stabbed 40 times. Her 16 year old daughter had found her when she returned home from school. The victim's ex-boyfriend had found her and her daughter in our city, after they had escaped his terror from two states away, and murdered her. He ended up getting life in prison. I had to testify at the trial. This guy was such a freak that he tried to attack the bailiff and the judge during his trial. The thought of meeting the wrong person just once and you're set for a life of fear is just so frightening to me. The poor daughter oh my god. I came home from work to find my fiancé dead on the living room floor. 911 wanted me to do chest compressions even though he was cold. I wasn't strong enough to roll him over, which ended up being a blessing. He'd been there long enough that his blood had settled to the lowest points in his body. Apparently his face was pretty gruesome. Glad that's not the last memory I have of his face. I'm so sorry. I hope you are okay, sad face. I'm sorry for your loss. What was the cause of death? Walked out to my girlfriend's living room and her 81 year old grandpa was slumped over. By the look on his face I knew he was dead. 911 dispatch still wanted me to try chest compressions even though he had rigor mortis. The sound he made when his body hit the ground after being pulled out of his chair will stay with me until I die. 911 dispatcher here, I'm sorry you had to go through that. I can say for liability reasons we're supposed to encourage CPR no matter what. Each state's medical director can set standards of obvious death where you aren't required, but my state has no such precedent. However, one time I took a call from a father who found his adult son dead. He had overdosed some time in the last 24 hours, but from what he was describing both rigor and labor mortis had set in. I made a split-second decision and told the father to close the bedroom door and go downstairs. If going by policy, I was 1000% in the wrong. I should have encouraged him to try CPR. 
However, I'd take a slap on the wrist at work over knowingly traumatizing a father when I know his son is dead. Also, if a dispatcher encourages you to do CPR, and you feel the person is 100% dead, you can tell them that and refuse CPR. You won't be in any trouble, and the dispatcher won't think less of you. Of course this is only if you are 100% sure the person is dead. So many of the stories I've read say that 911 wants you to do chest compressions even though the other person is ice cold. Why would they even do that to the person calling? Give them more trauma? My so and I lived in a two-unit apartment building a couple years ago, in the upstairs unit. Downstairs was a middle-aged woman and her late teens or early twenties son. She worked overnights as a nurse, and I think he was doing college part-time or something, not exactly sure. One morning, I'm getting out of the shower, getting ready for work, and I hear the woman downstairs screaming my so's name, crying for help. My so sleeps like the dead, so they had no idea, but I threw some shorts on and ran downstairs. The neighbor's son was face down in the middle of their hallway. I helped her flip him over so she could try mouth to mouth, but he was cold to the touch. I remember being startled by how heavily his head hit the ground when we flipped him. I called 911 while she did chest compressions and sobbed, but it was all way too late. Apparently he'd had an asthma attack and collapsed in the middle of the night. He'd been dead for hours by the time his mother got home from work and found him. Edit, spelling. Jesus the guilt would be awful for that poor woman, even though it's obviously not her fault at all. I have a friend that also almost died from this same exact scenario. Just as he was about to pass out he had the awareness to smash something or knock something over making a loud bang because he couldn't scream. His mother heard the bang and it saved his life. I had my friend's neighbor die in my arms. He was about 55 and not in good health. I was sitting on the front step of my friend's house chatting to the neighbor as he worked on his car, next thing he stumbled towards me with a strange expression on his face and falls into my arms and dies. I actually saw the light go from his eyes. Tried CPR and rang an ambulance which arrived in minutes but it turned out he'd had a massive heart attack. That's rough. Hate it for your sake, but at the same time I'd be glad he didn't die alone. I'm so sorry. That is a sight that's hard to unsee. I'm glad you were there for him. My brother was a teenager when he found our dad. He was working outside in the heat and had a massive heart attack. The saddest thing in my life at that point, other than my dad dying, was my barely a teenager brother telling me he had closed our dad's eyes. My dad passed in my arms. You never quite get over seeing your parents suddenly not be your parent. It was like my father had been replaced, with a husk. Cause everything that made him my dad, was gone in seconds. My dad committed suicide when I was 15 and although I'm sure it wasn't easy for my grandpa to see him, I'm sure everyone can agree we're so thankful my brother and I didn't see it. Not me but my cousin. She was driving to work one morning when she noticed a light in front of a house that hadn't been there before. But there was something wrong with it, it didn't look like a normal light, it was shining up. She pulled over and looked closer, and could make out the shape of an SUV that had hit a tree and ended up with the nose up the trunk of the tree and front tires off the ground. It had been there so long that there was a covering of snow on it which was sort of filtering the headlights, that was the weird light she saw. She went over and brushed snow off the driver's window, and the driver was dead in his seat. I don't think he died in the crash, I think he crashed because he had died while driving, but I'm not sure. She didn't mention any blood, she only said how blue he was. One of my great uncles died while driving and rear-ended a semi. He had a stroke while in his 60s. Kinda similar, I saw what looked like lightning on the road ahead of me. It was dark but the sky was clear, no storms. A man had a heart attack and hit a power pole. He was as gone by the time I got to his car. Unfortunately I've done this twice. Both times while at work, and under similar circumstances. 
I used to work as a harbor master for a smallish private shipyard. Mostly pleasure vessels, with a few being liverboards, but a few small commercial fishing vessels as well. Biggest ship there was an 80-footer. Each morning I would walk the docks to check moorings and look for anything that might need the attention of the maintenance department. The first was a floater I originally mistook for flotsam in the water after a holiday weekend. It was only after I had grabbed a boat hook and attempted to pull it out that I discovered what it was. I called our local Leos who sent out a team, and set up barricades a bit up the pier to spare anyone else the discovery. It wasn't until after the remains were fished out that I was able to identify the body as one of the live aboards. After the coroner took possession I escorted the Leos to his boat where we found a pretty large blood splat at the edge of his boarding plank. It was concluded that he had fallen when boarding, and hit his head, likely drowning while unconscious. The second was a suicide by gunshot. Another morning inspection gone horribly awry. I was walking the docks and saw what I thought was someone passed out on the deck. Not horribly uncommon. If you know any sailors, you know that there are some drinkers. So I walked over to wake him, get him below decks before the sun got too high. I couldn't see the mess spread behind him until I walked out onto the finger pier of his slip. I called my locals, put up barricades, the Leos sent their team out, collected the remains, I had to google and call a cleanup team. Once the cleanup team was on site, a couple hours later, I left instructions with the maintenance team to pull the barricades when they were done, and went home. It was a pretty grisly scene and it was a few days before I went back to work after that one. I took a new job about a month later. Oh wow, what a job man, I'm glad you've moved on too. Subscribe for more hot reddit takes in your inbox, guaranteed.